This 3D static equilibrium problem has us calculating the tension in two ropes and the reaction at a ball and socket joint at A. So we want to find the tension in the two ropes. One of the ropes is going to go from C to E. I will call that TCE. And the other rope uh, is going to have a tension I'm just going to call T, and we'll see why as we get into the free body diagram. And then it is that ball and socket joint at A, so we want all the reactions in component form at A. And we're told to use a weight of that crate to be 80 pounds. So as usual, for a static equilibrium problem, we need to start with a free body diagram. I am going to keep the coordinate system that we are given that is going to pass through that point A as our origin. And the bar is going to be on this y-axis. Point A is the origin. Uh, I'll um, get back to that in a second. So the bar is going to go along the y-axis here and terminate at this point C. And point B along the way is going to be important. And also we see that we have uh, ropes that have, well, we have a pulley at that point D that lies on the XZ plane. And this point E up here, uh, we're going to use that as well in a moment. So this down here is point C. And we have our point B. And we have a cable that goes from C to D. And around that pulley at D, and there's a cable that goes from B to D. And then from C to E, we are also going to have a force that way. I'm going to make the forces in a different color because it's going to get a little bit confusing here. So what forces are going to be acting, what forces and moments are going to be acting on our system? Well, we can start with that weight force from the crate, that 80 pounds down. at point C. And we are going to, go, uh, while we're at point C, let's see what else is happening. We have a rope that goes from C around D to B. So if we are cutting through and we're seeing what these tensions are in these ropes here, the tension is going to be along that cable from C to D, and it's going to be up in that direction. So I can call that TCD. But also, I have a separate rope that's connected from C to E. That's its own different force that I'm going to call TCE. So a rope from C to E, a rope that points from C to D. We don't need to, point C does not need to know that goes around a pulley. It just knows that that force is directed along the direction of the cable. So from C's perspective, it goes from C to D. So that's the TCD. Uh, let's work backwards now to point B, and I'll fill in uh, the coordinates of these points. Point B has a rope that goes from B to D. The rope must be pulling on our object that we are not including in the free body diagram. So here we're going to have a T, B, D. And that's all that's happening at point B. And at point A, we have a ball and socket joint. So because our object is connected to that ball and socket, we cannot move along the x direction, the y direction, the z direction. We cannot move in space at all. We can't translate in space at all, which means we have three components of force at A. Potentially, we'll have an AX, we will have an AY, and an AZ component, because all spatial translation is prevented. But the ball and socket allows rotation about any axis, at least a little bit of rotation around the x, the y, or the z. So point A will have no couples. Right, I'll fill in some more of these values. So point D is located at negative 3, 0, 4 feet. And I will use feet as my baseline distance measurement for this problem, and pounds as my force measurement. C is located at 0, 12, 0. B is at 0, 4, 0. And point E is at 3, 0, 6. 
and A is the origin. Uh, I'll at least label it as such, A. All right, so one more thing in the free body diagram uh, that we could either realize now in the free body diagram step or as an equation later, I think it's a little bit easier to look at now. I labeled this TCD and TBD in my diagram, but if we look, there's it's a single rope that goes from C around the pulley at D and connects at B. It's the same rope the whole time. So actually, we already know TCD and TBD are going to be the same because we're in static equilibrium and it's one rope around a pulley with no friction. So TCD and TBD are the same force. So both of them, I am just going to call T. And I'm just realizing now, or I'm noting now, they're the same force. So going forward, I know that they must have the same tension as the rope goes from B to D and D to C. But do notice CE is still its own force. I did not change that, that's its own rope. It is not, it's, they're both tied at point C, but one rope goes from C to E, a second rope goes from C around D to B. So looking at this free body diagram, I have AX, Y, and Z, three unknowns. I have that tension in the rope around the pulley, and I have the tension in ropes CE. So this is counting it up five unique unknowns at this point, uh, which we just want to be cautious of because typically we'll have six, but we will see through the equations why we only have five. Uh, so, but we just want to make a note in case we modeled something wrong. And let me just redraw this 80 pounds. So we are ready to start solving for these two tensions and the reactions at point A at this point. We are in 3D. Uh, I'm going to start by putting down the unit vectors that are going to be important. Uh, so looking here, there are three forces that are not purely along a coordinate axis. The two instances of T and TCE. So I will want to write down those unit vectors that are going to matter before I start. So you hat CD, which will be the direction of that T that goes from C to D. If I go through the math here, I get, I'll leave it as a fraction for now, negative 3 thirteenths i minus 12 thirteenths j plus 4 thirteenths k. I want BD for that other tension t, and this I'll leave in decimal form, so 0.469i minus 0.625j plus 0.625k. And I want the unit vector that goes from C to E. Right, so taking point E minus point C and normalizing that, I am going to get here a positive 0.218i hat minus 0.870j plus 0.436k. A, Y, X, and Z are along coordinate directions. The weight force is in the negative Z direction, so I, I'm not going to take the time to write those unit vectors. I just need to remember to put them into my force equations next. But getting these unit vectors out of the way, now I can start looking at my force equations, and my job is going to be a lot easier. So in the X direction, I want the X components of all my forces, any force that has an X component. So first I'll look at my free body diagram, AX, all of it, I assumed was pointing in the positive X direction. And now looking at my unit vectors, I will have a negative 3 thirteenths TCD minus 0.469 TBD. And oh, th these are both T, I don't need the suffixes. And plus 0.218 TCE, I do need the CE there. All right, so T appears twice. Um, I'll add them together later though. So looking at equation one, I have really three unknowns, AX, T, and TCE. So three unknowns and so far only one linearly independent equation. So I'll move on to the Y direction. I have a Y, which I'm assuming is positive, minus 12 thirteenths T, minus 0.625 
t from BD minus 0 0.870 TCE. So I now have four unknowns, two equations. So I move on. In the z direction, I have that z component of the force at A, I'm assuming is up, uh, plus 4 thirteenths times t, plus 0.625 times t, plus 0.436 TCE. I now have three, four, five, five unknowns, but only three equations. So all five of the unknowns are now uh, appearing, but I really can't solve for anything yet. I don't have enough equations for my unknowns. So this is a case where, again, I am going to have to move on and keep writing equations and hope that something mathematically is going to become easier for us. Uh, that may or may not be the case. So I can write a moment equation, a vector moment equation. Uh, so looking here, I have that ball and socket joint at A. A is going to be my best choice here because this equation, in this equation, three unknowns will be eliminated. AY, AX, AZ. However, I do have four forces that are acting with their line of action not passing through A that I do have to account for. So if I write it out, I will have RAB cross that T times U hat, uh, get rid of this, magnitude T times U hat BD. I will have R, that's a B here, and I will have RAC cross T U hat CD. I'll have another RAC cross negative 80K from the weight plus an RAC cross TCE. So I do have a good number of terms here to get through. Uh, I will need some space. So rewriting this, I will have this I, J, K. RAB will be 0, 4, 0. And T, U hat, B, D is going to be negative 0.469. I need a little bit more room for all the decimals here. Uh, U hat BD is negative 0.469, negative 0 0.625, 0 0.625, and then I have T on the outside. So notice I'm pulling the T to the outside here. I'm going to, because the I component, J component, K component all have T connected to them. So just so it's a little bit less to write, I'm going to be multiplying through by uh, a T here. Plus, now my second cross product is RAC cross U hat CD. RAC will be 0, 12, 0. Uh, here too, I can pull out the T and just write U hat CD which was uh, negative 3 thirteenths in the I, 12 thirteenths in the J, and 4 thirteenths in the K. Plus uh, my third cross product, I, J, and K, 0, 12, and 0, 0, 0, negative 80. Uh, note here, everything is pounds and feet, so my units are going to be consistent. My tensions uh, and my forces are all going to come out in pounds. And then my fourth cross product. I can pull out the TCE, 0, 12, 0. And then the components of TCE, 0.218, negative 0 0.870, and 0.436. And notice in here, I do have these unknowns, these variables in my cross product. So there will be T's and TCE's after I do my expansion of these determinants. So now I expand my determinants using the cofactors. So using the, the strategy we've been employing here, 
and I'm going to get for this first one a positive 2.5t i hat and a plus 1.87 k hat uh, t k hat and the j hat term was zero after we do that cross product expansion so 1.87 k hat so that's the expansion of my first term the second term I am going to have uh, I'll leave as decimals or uh, fractions but I will combine it shortly 48 thirteenths t i hat plus 36 thirteenths t k hat here too the j term is going to be zero plus from my weight expansion I will get a negative 960 i hat the j term will be zero and the k term will be zero and then from the fourth cross product here the tce cross product i am getting a 5.24 tce i hat minus 2.62 tce uh, k hat and clean it up a little bit 5.24 and here the j term again will be zero due to the zero in the i and the k component of my displacement or my position vector now I expanded my cross product uh, everything has an i a j or a k attached to it because again it's still a vector expression right now now i'm going to collect my like terms so i want to collect all of my i terms first i have a 2.5 t and a 48 thirteenths t I'll combine that now as a decimal, 6.19t plus the 5.24tce minus 960, that's my i hat. Now the j hat terms, collecting all of those. Uh, if I look, there's actually no j terms, so I, I will write it out explicitly, zero j hat and collecting my k terms. I will have the 1.87t and a 36 thirteenths t. So I will combine those and get the decimal 4.64t minus 2.62tce. And those are all of my k terms from above. This turns into three scalar equations. So on the left-hand side, remember, I have 0, i, 0, j, 0, k. So equating the coefficients in front of i, I will get 0 equals 6.19t plus 5.24tce minus 960. Equation 5, left-hand side 0, i, right-hand side also 0. 0 equals 0, that is true, but it is not a linearly independent equation but it still must be true for static equilibrium. On the left-hand side, 0k, and on the right-hand side, 4.64t minus 2.62 tce is my k coefficient. Okay, all of my equilibrium equations are written. It was uh, a process for this one because of all the cross products and having my unknowns in cross products. But now if I look back, I have equations 1, 2, and 3. I have equations 4 and 6. Again, 5 was not linearly independent, so I'm not counting that. I have 5 linearly ind independent equations, and I have those 5 unknowns, ax, y, and z, t, t, c, e. So I do at this point have a solvable system. I have 5 variables, unknown variables, and 5 linearly independent equations. So I am now ready for the solve step. Now, unfortunately, nothing came out really easy in the solve step here, but if I look at equations 4 and 6, that's the best place to start solving this because they both have the same two unknowns, T and TCE. So I do have to solve these simultaneously with substitution or elimination or some other, um, some other process, but if I do that, I am going to get that T, the tension in that rope that goes around the pulley, I get 62 pounds. And I will note that's intention and it has to be for this to be realistic. 
and TCE, I get 110 pounds, also tension. Okay, those are the tensions in the ropes. They're both positive, so that looks good. Uh, I can now take this result and go back into equation one. Equation one, uh, now that I know T and TCE, AX is the only thing I don't know. So I can solve for AX. AX, I get a positive 19.4 pounds. So my assumption of the positive X direction was correct, but uh, whether it was, it was positive or negative, we would still be able to make the same inference. I can use these results and get a Y in my equation too, because now it's the only unknown left. A Y becomes a positive 192 pounds. And three, one more time looking up at the third equation, a z is the only unknown left. I know t, I know t, c, e. So I can find a z is equal to, here my assumption was incorrect, it's actually negative 26 pounds. But I was consistent with how I drew the free body diagram, how I used it in my equations. So the positive negative on a, x, y, z, as long as I'm consistent with my picture, that's okay. So based on what I needed to find, I found the three components of the force at that ball and socket A, and I found the tension in those two ropes, the one that went around the pulley and the one that just went from C to E. But the important thing to note uh, during the free body diagram step in this case was that TCD and TBD were the same tension because it's the same rope going around the pulley. Now, had I in the free body diagram left it as TCD and TBD, I would have been working with six unknowns, which would be okay. However, I would have needed an extra seventh equation where I state TCD equaled uh, TBD. And then my justification would be it's the same rope, therefore the tension must be constant. So either way I modeled it, whether I did it at the free body diagram step or later in an equation step, I would have had to say the tension in these two parts of the same rope are equal to each other. So going through that free body diagram step, we got our unit vectors, we wrote our force equations. In this case, there wasn't much we could do at the solve step yet. Did our moment equation, noting that in this case, there were unknowns in all of the cross products that we had to keep track of. We did the cross product, we got i, j, k components and then split those that one vector equation into three scalar equations. Showed that we had a solvable system with five linearly independent equations and five unknowns, and then we were just able to solve them.